Talk number one is God's love. And before I turn over the floor to, to Father Adela, I will be remiss if I don't share with you what Pope Francis said about God's love. Uh, because one time he was invited to do talk number one. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So I will, I would like to share to you what Pope Francis said about God's love. He said, and, and he shared this during, in 2015, uh, during the World Families of Meeting, World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia. And he was, you know, gave the last home, uh, the last mass. And in his homily, he shared this, this is story. He said, once a child asked him, what did God do before creating the world? And the Pope said, for a while he had problem answering the child because it's simple question. It's a very basic question. And then he said he had really difficulty answering the question. Uh, but he, you know what his answer is? He said, before creating the world, God love. Before creating the world, God love. Because God is love. You know, God has so much love. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is overflowing that it has to come out. You know, you, you felt love before, isn't it? And when you feel love, you just want to share everything, isn't it? So this love has to be poured out from them and has to share that love with those out of themselves, then God created the world. Like I said, this is the most basic truth and the first truth of Christianity, as we will see in talk number one. Okay, all the talks, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, doesn't mean anything unless we get this talk number one. Okay, let me introduce to your speaker, Padre Rodel Balagtas. I don't know if you, a lot of you know him personally, but I am going to go by the numbers. Padre Rodel by the numbers. Uh, he, he has been a priest for 30 years, 25 years in parish ministry. We know him way back as parish priest in Immaculate, and now he's a parish priest in Incarnation. And I am a parishioner of Incarnation, and a lot of you are probably parishioners of this is one thing we can attest. Our church is alive uh, because of Padre Rodel. Uh, he just gave this aura of joy and um, joy in his service. And, and I hear this not from me, but also from other people, from leaders in the church. Okay. And of course, he was, you know, he was in, involved in five years in the seminary in the formation of priests. And this is the big number. I know I, I have to round it off, but thousands of people he has already touched before he became, he was a priest and now after he has a priest, but he has only one love, okay? In three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father Rodel, take it away. <laughs> Let me close my, uh, actually, Father Adel, it's your turn. I think he might be muted. Can't hear you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I, I'm so delighted to be with you tonight. Uh, there's a lot of you, uh, 62 participants here, and it's amazing what... Uh, went through during this pandemic, how we are here just doing the CLP uh, via Zoom. And the Holy Spirit is uh, real working here. And we have uh, someone here who's so relentless in evangelization, that's Abraham. Thank you and Eloisa for really organizing this uh, Christian Life program. And I've seen them, uh, you know, promote this uh, after mass and they're always here promoting it on Sunday. and you know, to all their friends. So I want to thank you for, for, for your efforts, uh, Abraham and, and uh, Eloisa and the whole Couples for Christ. I was thinking when you talk about Couples for Christ and you, you are mentioning all the different groups, uh, 
I think I qualify in the singles for Christ, right? Because <laughs> I'm single. <laughs> but anyway, there's a joke on the side. So all of you are here. You have taken this time. How wonderful that you are dedicating uh, several Friday nights to be here to know so more about your faith, to deepen your faith. And so I'm so pleased that uh, in today's times, there's a need to evangelize. It needs to go out there, as Abe says. Uh, and we want to thank the Corpus of Christ. I was looking at this worldwide mission that uh, they're having. And it's really uh, remarkable that you are uh, in every part of the world. And you're still continually uh, evangelizing, sharing the good news of Christ to every land. Uh, I remember Pope Francis once said to the Filipinos, uh, uh, he, he said one time, as he was we, in an audience with a group of migrant workers in Italy, he said, you know, Filipinos are smugglers of faith, smugglers <laughs> of faith. Uh, he was talking to a lot of the migrant mothers uh, who are taking care of, uh, you know, of children of uh, families in Italy. You know, we have a lot of caregivers there. And how they are really the ones evangelizing the children of these families. And they smuggle the faith. Uh, and the Pope's uh, um, remark really uh, is something that we all need to appreciate as Filipinos. Um, and we're here to, we're called in a very special way to evangelize this world, to evangelize the U.S. We are uh, celebrating 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. And then and, the uh, and we're here in the U.S., uh, in California, we're celebrating 250 years of Catholicism since we're in the Jubilee year, since the foundation of um, the first California mission, Bishop, uh, that's the mission San Gabriel. And so how wonderful it is that we are having this Jubilee year in the Archdiocese, and we are participating in this Jubilee year by uh, sharing our faith and getting involved uh, and in the church and deepening our faith as a Catholic Christian. So I wanna welcome all of you and it's gonna be a great night uh, as uh, what uh, Abe said, uh, it's all about love. Uh, the other day, Monday, uh, there was a group of, there was a meeting of all the priests in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And um, you know how the pandemic really has kind of dampened the spirit uh, among priests, you know. Uh, we're human beings too, most of my, a lot of my um, priest friends, some of some of them were really this uh, depressed over this pandemic, and they kind of felt out of it. And some of them, uh, some are afraid, crippled by the pandemic, crippled by the virus. Um, some of them are also, um, uh, you know, affected by the, the, the political divisions going on among all of us. So even priests and bishops are kind of. Uh, uh, affected by, by this whole pandemic. And so the challenge for us at that last Monday as we were getting together is to go back to our first love, go back to the first love. And what is that first love? How we fell in love with Jesus, how we fell in love with God. And the only reason why we, came, we became priests is because of God's love. That's the only reason why we are here. I mean, I'm looking at my life, 30 years of ministry. I mean, that's significant. I'm 60 years old. And just looking at the 30 years, and, and, and some of you too may look at the number of years you've been married, the number of years you've migrated to the US, and the years of service you've given. And you're amazed at how God has been there joining with you in your life. How God has been so faithful to all of us and I, I won't be able to do all this work in the last 30 years. I'm, I'm an urgent vessel also in my own sinfulness and my own weaknesses. God is there pushing me up, guiding me, you know, hugging me, embracing me. And I, I really just can't do this. And even my, my priest friends would say that. Even the Pope would say that. Everything is grace. Everything is about God's love, how he has loved us from the beginning. So on this, uh, pro during this CLP, uh, Christian Life Program, um, first of all, I'd like to look at the word program. Now, when we say Christian Life Program, we don't mean 
that you know you 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 begin you start and then you end and that's over <laughs> that's not what this is it's uh, this is a a transformational experience as uh, abe said it's an experience of god's transforming power in jesus christ and the power of the holy spirit you know it, and I, i'm just amazed by when christ came here you know if you look at the life of Christ, he only ministered until the age of 30. He was a young adult, you know, and 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 the influence he had, the words, the wisdom. I mean, look at what has happened in, in this whole years of Christianity, how it, the, the word of God, the gospel, the, the, the life, death and resurrection of Christ has really transformed us, transformed the world. So. This whole Christian life program is really about how Christ is going to transform our life, how God's word is going to transform us by the Holy Spirit. And that is real. I can tell you that the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ offering the whole world. It's the spirit of Christ that's moving us forward, that's allowed you to be here. Why are you here? You were moved by the Spirit to be here. In other words, there's something that is missing in your life. There's something that's not that was nudging you to come here. It is the Holy Spirit that is moving you here. And the Holy Spirit has a lot of promise to all of you that if you surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit, if you to surrender, if you surrender to God's love, then your life will become different. And this is the promise of Christ that if you Surrender yourself to God's spirit. If you allow the spirit to come into your hearts, then the Lord will, you know, will grant you this, this amazing life. So I want to start with the prayer with this. Uh, I want to continue on with this, uh, this open, this uh, scripture verse from Ephesians, which for me is a beautiful uh, way to continue this session. Uh, St. Paul tells us, for this reason, I kneel before God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's the promise of Christ. That, you know, your life will be rooted and grounded in God's love. That you may know the breadth and the length and the height of God's love. So, although you were, you Although we receive the life of the Spirit through the sacraments of initiation, what are they? Baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. You know, these are the three sacraments of initiation. Although we receive them, we need to fan, to fan the spark of life into flames. We receive the Spirit, but we need to fan this spark of life into flames, that we become inflamed with God's love. The seminar invites us to gather and prepare for a very personal Pentecost, a new release or revitalization of the Spirit's presence in our lives. And that's what we want to do here, that your life will become different and that you have your own personal Pentecost, a release of the Holy Spirit's presence in your lives. John 14, 16 tells us, Jesus says, says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. That's Christ's promise. So 
John told his disciples that I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper and the helper is the Holy Spirit. So I'd like to talk about the four guiding principles of Christian life here uh, just to, 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 you know, to make sure that we are theologically sound in the way we are presenting this, uh, this uh, seminar. Number one, the first guiding principle, God offers us a deeply personal and communal covenant with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're here to help you establish, reestablish, or deepen in you an individual relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So this is, some of you are born Christians, Catholics, a lot of you are going to church already. A lot of you may be involved already in different ministries. Some of you are just new or are coming back. But here is the goal. We are here to help you to establish, to reestablish, uh, or to deepen in you an individual relationship, an individual relationship with God, to Jesus. Number two, our baptism has freed us from sin and brought us to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. That's what happened when we were baptized. But we're here to help you yield to the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit in your lives. I like the word yield. To yield means to surrender. We want you to yield, to give, to allow, to give permission to the Holy Spirit to come into your life, to change you. And, and that, that, that comes with an open mind, an open heart. So I hope you're here with an open-minded heart and mind and heart. And number three, we're here to inspire and encourage you to become active members in your faith community and to a life of service using the gifts, fruits, and the charisms offered to the Holy Spirit. So the promise of the Holy Spirit is to grant you gifts, gifts of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, uh, and other gifts, the charismatic gifts, we're here to inspire you to become active members endowed with these gifts so that you can have a meaningful life. Some of you who have been serving in the church, we all know that it gives us so much joy and meaning when we are able to serve others in whatever capacity we have. Uh, whenever we minister to people, it's not that we give it's, it, it's more that we receive something when we give. We receive a fulfilling and really meaningful life when we are able to serve God in different capacities, uh, keeping in mind the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And fourth, new life means a life of discipleship and growth into Christ. So we're here to, pro to provide you effective means of growth, such as small faith sharing groups, Prayer, study, the sacraments, the reading of the scripture, and participating in the ministries of the church. So we're here we, to provide you with those skills, with those opportunities for growth. So you can continue to be inflamed with the power of the Holy Spirit. You know? so, um, so these are the four guiding principles of Christian life. And I wish that for you. So, my friends, I want to, therefore, um, th uh, promise you that it's going to be a, an amazing journey. So, uh, uh, St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, once said, um, he said, I ask God from the wealth of his glory to give you power through his spirit to be strong in your inner self. That's what we read in the, in the opening, in the prayer at the beginning. Uh, he said, and I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love. So that together with all God's people may have the power to understand the broad, the breadth, the height, and the depth of Christ's love. So before we go into this uh, thing and so before I go into my own personal story, I, therefore I want to share to you what this truth is about. The truth of God's love. The truth is this: God wants 
an intimate relationship with you. That's what he wants. He wants a personal relationship with his one. With, it's one of us. And, and God is not just up there, you know, like watching. I know God is involved in our life. God acts. God speaks. God touches us and intervenes in our lives. God is love and offers us the fullness of life. That's what he promises. He wants us a full life. Throughout the history, God has offered a covenant, a promise of love that is both individual and communal. It's of a, it's of us is invited to experience the vastness of God's love as a part of the people of God. And those of you who have studied uh, scriptures, Bible study, looking at the Old Testament and the New Testament, this is the story. God acted. God got involved. God chose a people and intervened in their lives and showed them their love. The next talk is about salvation. And what God did was that, you know, like the reading that we read in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And that's God's ultimate way. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, this is important. When we talk about Jesus Christ, we're talking about his life, his death, his resurrection. Paschal mystery. But as we look at our own faith, we know that the word of God, his teachings, his words, the gospel, all this that we hear every Sunday when we come to Mass, these are words that give eternal life. These are words that if we take them, we will never perish. So that's why it's important for us to look at our faith and be literate in regards to knowing God's word, you know, reading the scriptures, because that's how God showed his love for us through, through his journey in the world, through salvation history, and by sending us his son and his son giving us this wisdom, his teachings. If we believe in him, he will never perish. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other. Now, other people are looking for other wisdom. They go for sorcerers. They go in yoga. They go, and it's not that nothing is wrong with yoga. These are all, it's good. They go and look at different philosophers and stuff. You know, they read different books and trying to understand life, trying to you know, trying to uh, come up with some wisdom or understand life, death, and all that. But you know, for us Christians, God is giving us the wisdom. God in Jesus Christ is the word. The word made flesh. Whatever he said, his word, his words, his teachings are what will save the world. I can tell you that. Why is the world is in turmoil? Because they have not believed in the words of Christ. People have to accept that. But in order to accept God's word, you must be open. And, and you must really believe. So you have to believe first. Believe that Christ is the son of God, the anointed one. He was the anointed one. So, so just for that, and this is, a, you know, you're going to learn more about that as we, you go to this seminar. But let me, let me just give a face to, to to this to God's love through my own life all right and and to to share my own personal story uh, not my whole life but how I started to 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 really feel God's love you know uh, because I, I, I because God's love is real and the Holy Spirit is real I entered the seminary when I was young I was just fresh from from elementary you know I was you know, in the Philippines, you're, you at six, you after sixth grade. Remember, years ago, now there's seventh grade, I believe. At sixth grade, you you go to high school. Well, at at a bare age of you know, at eleven, twelve, I was finished. I just finished sixth grade. I entered the seminary, minor seminary, and um, of course, when you're that young, you know, I, my motive was not really about becoming a priest. My motive was because I wanted to go to a good school. In my town, they said, if you go to a seminary, you, 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 
that's the best school that you can go to. And uh, and so I, I and then the, the fact of the matter too is that I was in a troubled family house. My my mom was always nagging at me. And my dad was absent. So I was really inside of me. I was like troubled. So I wanted to stay away from home and just go someplace. So I entered the seminary. I applied at a high school seminary with my, my, without my parents' knowledge. They didn't know that I applied. So and so um, and then I just they just you know knew about when they got the paperwork. Uh, the, applic the acceptance that I was <laughs> accepted in the seminary. But to cut the, sh the, the story short, I went to high school and without a very um, pure intention of, of really becoming a priest. So at my senior high school, when I was in senior high school, they gave us this Life in the Spirit seminar, this Christian life program. It's, it was a retreat. So um, many of us were just kind of being kids or teenagers, we were not very serious about it. So it was a whole weekend of retreat. Uh, it was there, they came from Makati, San Lorenzo village, uh, Ligayan and Panginoan. And they, they gave us this kind of seminar. And of course, you know, we had to listen and all that. And they gave us this, you know, this. And at the end of it, they, they had a prayer session where they have the imposition of the hands and they were praying for us. They were speaking in tongues and everything. And uh, some of us were kind of laughing at them as they were speaking in tongues. And they thought that we were speaking in tongues because some of us knew Latin then. So <laughs> we were talking like, but anyway, um, so that, re that retreat was something. And the retreat finished. And this is where I'm coming, when I will, when I can tell you God's power. After the retreat, we went home for the weekend and then we came back. And in the seminary, the first activity is the benediction. And during benediction, as the priest was raising, raising the, the monstrance, I was hearing voices. This is, I was in third year high schools. I was hearing voices. And the voice was coming from Jesus. And he was telling me, go and gather your friends. Go and gather your friends. And I said, what are you talking about? This is, this is when the monster was being lifted. And so I was a very shy person. I was not popular in this class, you know. So I, so we went, after the benediction, we went to the, uh, to the hall, uh, dining hall. And after that, suddenly there was, the spirit was kind of nudging me, was persuade, was kind of pushing me to talk to a lot of my high classmates. And before I knew it, I was able to gather a group of students. We went to our room and we just started praying. We burst into prayers and, and the whole, the seminary fathers were just, what's going on here? What is Rodell doing here? And we were just speaking in tongues and praising and everything. And I don't know what happened to me. I, would, I, I could only tell you that that was the work of the Holy Spirit is a very surprising. Now, I cannot explain why that happened. All I know that at, at that tender age, I was touched by the spirit. And that was the beginning of my transformation. And in the seminary, in, in, the, in, high, in, the, in, in, high, in the high school, we, so we started having prayer meetings and, and the whole thing was falling in love. I fell in love, not with a girl, but I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with God. And, and that was the first time I felt God's personal love to me, to tell you the truth. You know, why would I, you know, you know why is it that, you know, I was, I, I'm saying that to you because I was an innocent boy. And, and suddenly I felt this tremendous love that God has for me. It's changing. It was changing me. It was. It changes my behavior and everything. And I even would like. I started having a hunger for more for prayer. I became a leader of a prayer group, and I started playing guitar. But I didn't start playing guitar before. I mean, I started learning songs. We we started singing and all that. We started having a prayer meeting. 
And, and every morning I will wake up every morning and I will sing the Psalms. I will read the Bible and then just go out in the morning and just praise the Lord and, and just really, uh, you know, be aware of, of God's spirit in me. I was, and that the whole thing's changed. That was my life-changing experience a conversion experience. And all I could tell was this, that retreat, that CLP was the way for me to get, to, re, to really be transformed in my life. Now, that was the beginning. That was my first love, my first experience of God's love. Now he is going, and I'm sure some of you would say you have that experience. You know, it was my experience of God's first love that really I was aware. And this is the idea of this CLP is for all of us to have an encounter with Christ. It's, God's love is about an, an experience. This isn't about a knowledge, a head knowledge, you know. Uh, you can quote me any verse in the Bible, in the scriptures, whatever it is. You can quote me any theological principle, whatever. But if you have not experienced God's personal love for you, it means nothing. It means nothing. You have to have a deep encounter with God. Why are people not going to church? Let me ask you. Why are people not or have stayed away from the church? Because they have not really felt that personal love of God, that deep encounter with the living God in Jesus Christ. So for me, the first, you know, quality, the first qualification of a disciple of Christ is that he is, he has for, first experience God's love. Imagine, uh, if you look at how Jesus, you know, uh, called his disciple, he didn't say, go follow me and, uh, and, and you, you know, the first thing he did was, he didn't say that, say, carry your cross and follow me. He didn't say, give up all your life. He said, come and see. Come and see. Remember? He said, and the disciples that said, where, where are you? Where are you? Where are you staying? And what did Jesus say? Come and see. Come and see. Come and look at me. Come and be with me. Come and dwell with me. Come and experience my love. That's the first thing. Before a disciple can really be a missionary, he has to be moved by God's love. And this is what will make you a missionary disciple of Christ. That's what made me become a priest. You know, uh, when I was, when I entered the high school and the priest asked me, uh, why do you want to become a priest? You know, I, I just borrowed the, the answer from a friend who, who coached me. He said, when you become, when, when he, they ask you why you become a priest, you just tell them this, you want to serve God and his people. I memorized that and I was accepted, right? <laughs> so that was when I entered high school. But after this life, this, this experience of transformation in my life, we were already asked to, to, to apply to the to college seminary. My answer changed. When the priest asked me in, in my application for college, they asked me, why do, you want to, why, why do you want to be a priest? You know, my answer was, I told them, because I want to reciprocate God's love. I want to reciprocate God's love because of the awesomeness of his love for me. And so that's what I said. I didn't say anything like, I want to serve God, I want to serve, you know, of course that's all part of it. But more so because I want to respond to God's love. So friends, uh, that's, 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 you know, that, that's my little story there at the beginning of my own journey as a prison. From then on, things just happen and and I know that these things will happen to you too. If you uh, really um, heal to God's love for you. So the, this, God will awaken that spirit in you when you, you know, when you enter into a personal relationship with him. So uh, what we want you to have here is indeed uh, that experience of God's love. And as I said, you know, uh, I, become a, I became aware at that point of God's love for me. 
you know, as I said, I told you I was singing songs. I, I love nature and I could I, I sense God's love in nature. In you know, when when I look at I used to go to Baguio then and and just in the Philippines, the summer capital of the Philippines. It's a beautiful place. And you know, I, I saw God in nature. Even now, when I when I go around, I, I God's love is tremendous that He created this world for us. That, that with spiritual, with eyes of faith, we can really see how God has really provided everything to us. This world that we live in, how beautiful it is. He created this world for us. We, have, we are called to be, to have dominion, of, dominion over this world. The problem is that we have destroyed it. But God gave us, gave it all for us. And God gave the gave us these marriages. Your marriage is because of God's love. He gave you this your partner. He gave you your family. What a blessing. You know, in the beginning, the book of Genesis, he said, I don't want man to be alone. I want to give him a partner, a companion in life. That's God's love. I want to give you a family. You know, God loves us. And the way he showed it to us is by by giving us this world, this family, you know, and and, and, and and I want to ask you this question now. What are you grateful for? That's, you know, if you look at your life, what are you grateful for? Look at your blessings that God has given you. That's the manifestation of God's love for you, for all of us. And sometimes, you know, we, we complain so much that we don't have this. Whether we, you know, we're afraid and all that. But look at the blessings, everything. Look at your life. Your life is a blessing. God has given you this life. So that's first. We experience God's love through what he has given us, through this creation. God has loved you. You are God's beloved. Your body, your body is a blessing ourselves you know just think of god has chosen you from the beginning has, has created you we're all different but in our uniqueness he loves each one of us you know when you look at the gospel you see how god sees goodness in every person look at the story of Zacchaeus, who was a you know a tax collector and how we look at him and say i want to i want i want to go into your, to your house jesus shows goodness in every person so still God sees goodness in all of you. When we don't see goodness in us, God sees goodness in us. God loves us. So that's why he sent his son Jesus to show that love for all of us. So God's love through creation. And of course, as I said, God showed his love by sending his son Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? That he sent his son Jesus to be with us, incarnate, to become flesh to walk with us to teach us the way he gave us his will he showed us the way and the way is his son is through his son jesus he's the way because he doesn't want us to get lost because he wants us to have a meaningful life because he wants you to have a joyful life so jesus by believing in him by having a, a, an intimate relationship with jesus then we can have life eternal. And then finally, God's love is shown through the Holy Spirit. Because he said to his disciples, I will never leave you. I will never leave you orphan. When he, when Jesus came back to heaven to be with his father, he said, I will send you an advocate, a helper. I will be with the church. The church is God's sacrament. It's sacrament par, you know, par excellence. Jesus, of course, is the par is the sacrament par excellence, but his spirit is in the church. So the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, rests in the church in all of us. He gave us the sacraments. The sacraments are visible signs of God's invisible grace. The sacraments of baptism, of confirmation of sacraments of uh, reconciliation and, and all the healing sacraments 
sacrament of marriage, sacrament of anointing, their sacraments of healing. All these are God's way of telling us, I will give you the spirit. Some people don't believe in the sacrament. They don't, I'm, I'm, if people can really understand the value of the sacraments, through the sacraments we are given the grace, the sanctifying grace. Christ told Peter, I will be with you till the end of times. And he gave Peter the key to the king's kingdom. So it, it came and he, Peter established a church for us. And that's why we have the, we have the, 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 the Holy Spirit is in the institutional church, the leadership, the hierarchy, and the Holy Spirit is in the lady, in all of you who are not priests or bishop. God is also using you. God is also asking you to really imbue this world with the spirit of his gospel. All of us, priests, bishop, lay people, all of us are called into this mission of love. So all I can say to you, my friends, that is that God is God's love is real. It's real. And I want you to have that, to experience that love. If there's anything that I want you to walk away from this thought is this. That my prayer is that you will have a deep encounter with God. An experience of God's love. Once you have that, Things will change and your world, your life will be different. Amen. I won't say much, but shortly that's what I could say more. But <laughs> I'd like you to continue on with your sharing. Uh, and really, the what I like what uh, Abe said, you know, this is not just this, this isn't about me, the speaker, or any or Abe, the organizer, but it's you. What we want to achieve here is that to see, to allow you to think about your own personal life. Where is God in your life? Do you really believe that God loves you? That his love is with you? Can you say with real honesty that God loves you? Just just who you are. That he wants to forgive you. He wants to heal you. He wants you to have a joyful, meaningful, eternal life. By believing in Jesus, we all know that we will never perish. We will have eternal life.